What's going on, rock stars? Welcome back to the 1% Life Show. I'm your host, peak performance coach and trainer, Joni Dillon. It's a little late on this. Is it Wednesday? Wednesday evening. And yet, if you're listening to us live on Facebook, and yet I wanted to come in here and and give you guys a little bit of a show. So we're talking today about high ticket sales and why you choosing not to sell your customers high ticket products and services is actually doing them a massive disservice. So if you're listening to us live, drop a hashtag live on in, in the comments. If you're listening to the replay, drop a hashtag replay. Let us know where you're tuning in from as well. We always love to know that. Rockstars, why is this topic top of mind. Well, I was um, actually listening to a friend of mine, Eileen Wilder, talk about high ticket sales today. And, you know, it, it got me thinking about why so many sales professionals, coaches who sell their own products and services, whether they're digital courses or their own coaching one-to-one or one-to-many services, why so many of those people struggle, right? Why are so many people struggling when it comes to their sales? And why is it any more difficult to sell a $250,000 home than it is to sell a $2.5 million home? That's been one of my conversations this past week as well. So today's episode is for you if you are selling a product, a service, tangible or intangible, doesn't matter, and you're tired of not making as much money as you truly deserve. It's also for you if you know you can be, you're, you're selling, right? But you're not really making the, um, that kind of, we used to call it timeshare money. If you're gonna be in timeshare sales and you're not making timeshare money, get out of the business, right? Or learn how to dial in your skill set and really your mindset in both so that you can start making real cash in that industry. In whatever industry you're in, I say the same thing about real estate sales. If you can't figure out how to sell, get out, right? Because you're wasting your time and you're doing your clients a huge disservice. So if you're tired of not making money, you know you're selling, but you're like, you could be selling a lot more and you're not really sure what's going on. Well, this could be a solution to your problem, okay? And if if you'd like people to start taking you more seriously in your process and your sales, selling high ticket and learning how to sell high ticket is for you. And Rockstar, if you're ready to start doubling, tripling, or even quadrupling your sales or more, then today's episode is for you. So we're going to get into this. One of the things that you may know about me, if you've been listening to the show for any length of time, is that I, I entered the world of timeshare sales back in 2009. And I, I started off with a bang. I was selling timeshare left and right. I had a failing business at the time. So I was like, oh my God, got to put food on the table, got to pay my mortgage. And you know, I, I had a, a business that just went under with the economy, the last economic downturn. And and so I ended up like selling timeshare of all things. I'm like, how the heck am I selling timeshare right now? But I loved it, right? I grew to love it uh, until it wasn't my friend. And <laughs> a couple weeks into it, I, I mean, I was just selling like crazy. They called me the rock star, which is why I call you guys rock stars. And, you know, deals were flying down left and right. Why? Well, partly because I knew nothing about what I was doing and I was selling the dream. I was selling vacations and the lifestyle. My passion was translating over to my customers. And then all of a sudden I stopped selling and I hit a brick wall and literally this wall was so thick. I couldn't figure out how to get over it, get through it, get around it, go anywhere. Like on the other side of it, I could not even give away a vacation ownership package. And it was just crazy to me. And that lasted for almost five weeks. And if you're in that industry, uh, many of my listeners are, or in the real estate world, and you're not selling for weeks or months at a time, you know how painful that can be. The walk to your car or the walk home, the drive home can be extremely frustrating, can it not? And, and so what I, what I realized in that process, once I finally figured out how to break through, right? I, 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 there was, it's actually the basis of my programs now, my 1% ultra performance program is based on the three pillars that I personally use to break through, which is the habits, the mindset piece, which is the subconscious piece, and um, an influence, learning how to influence people into from out of their excuses, out of their reasons why we love it, we want to do it, we just can't do it today into, oh my God, this is life changing. We need to have this. We've gone 10 years without a vacation. We need one now or whatever it is that you're selling, creating influence with them. And, um, and so when I, when I finally broke through this and I started selling again, 
one of the things that I really tried to do was, was give people it's like sell something that actually worked for them, right? So many people would say, oh no, don't sell that big of a, an option or a package. It's like, it's too big for them. Like they're not, they're going to kick, they're going to cancel. And I never got that. Like I never understood why, why is that your focus? Somebody canceling, wouldn't we rather put them into an, in a package that works? Wouldn't we rather put them into a vacation program that works for them? Because everybody knows that owners who owned the most were the happiest owners. It was these owners who owned two or three days um, a year or in every other year program it was just like they weren't really getting usage out of it they didn't get the value and they were actually our least happy owners and so i really started ignoring what the managers were saying when they were like don't sell this they're going to kick and i started pitching really big deals and it was one of the reasons why I had the, the highest average transaction price really in the company. And I was super proud of that because number one, I believe that when you put somebody into something that yes, maybe they have to spend more, but they're happier in the end, isn't it a win-win situation, right? They're happy because they actually have something that works that gets them out with what they thought they were buying, right? One or two weeks or three weeks a year of vacation time in their condos around the world. And I'm happy because I just doubled, tripled, even quadrupled the sale that I could have sold them into, right? And so it's a win-win situation. So what, what I realize now coaching entrepreneurs and sales professionals from all different industries is that there's a real mindset that comes along with selling high ticket and why so many people revert back to selling low ticket items. And, or if they have, you know, a varied array of price points, they're like, I'm just going to go for the bare minimum. And it has to do with this, this one point, which we're actually not going to get into today, but is your, your net worth will never surpass your self-worth, right? Your network will never surpass your self-worth. And in other words, your network will always equal your self-worth. So if you're not selling higher ticket products and services, it's because you don't believe that you're worthy of selling high ticket, higher ticket products and services. And that translates over to your customer and therefore they don't buy as well. So what happens when we actually sell something that is of greater of a greater investment is that there's a greater perceived value that comes along with this. Imagine this, like how, how many times are you, do you go into a place like, I want to get the best deal. I want to get the best deal. Is the best deal always do, giving you the best product, the best service. See, I'm actually the opposite. When I go somewhere and I, I'm very particular, I'm like, I want the best thing that you have. When I went in and bought my Audi, I remember I was so clear, like, don't sell me any crap, right? Like I want the best, the top of the line. I want all the features. I don't know anything about cars. I was like, just give me everything. I want all the options, right? Because I wanted the best for me. And when I invest into masterminds and things like that, it's like, I don't want their lower level programs. There's a lot of programs that are like $4,000, $7,000, I don't know, like low level programs. Those are not for me. I'm playing at, with the best in the world, right? So I have to invest in a level that gets me that outcome. And when you start thinking like that, so I'm always like, what's the highest in mastermind that I can invest into and who's, who's training me and what, you know, like I want to be with, I want to pay the best. And yes, those cost 25,000, 35,000, 50,000, and even more. And it's not about the money. This is what I really want you to get. When you, when you think about there's, there's a, um, a quote that a friend of mine, Myron Golden used to say, rich people think about the, the cost of almost nothing and the value of almost everything. Poor people think about the cost of almost everything and the value of almost nothing. Think about the power in that statement. Poor people are always like, oh my God, what does it cost? What does it cost? What does it cost? That's why they always stay poor because they're not thinking about the value that they're gonna extract from the thing that they're buying. And then they don't even say yes to the thing because it costs too much money. Whereas people who maybe are, are rich or on the path of being wealthy and you can replace wealthy with successful as well, okay? Successful and unsuccessful in that same quote that I just said. So when you think about that, successful people are like, no, 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 no. Like, uh, what's the value? What am I going to get out of this? Who cares about the cost? When value exceeds cost, cost isn't an issue. So when you, when you're selling something, you're like, you, when you're so focused on, see, oftentimes when I work with clients, they're like, oh my God, I got to give them a good deal. I got to give them a good deal. I'm like, says who? Says who? Like you can give them a good deal, but make sure your your the transformation that they're going to get is what you're focused on, right? Like the the value, and that's the value. See, people focus so much on the plane, right? Like the what does the plane look like? If you think of an airplane, right? Oh, all the details of the plane. It's Boeing 757. Blah blah blah. It's got this type of seats and whatever, all the stuff of a plane, right? And then the, what the thing is, it's like the customer doesn't want to buy the plane; they want to buy the destination. They're buying the destination. They're buying the transformation. They're buying the outcome, the result that you're going to give them. So if the price 
fall, is far like a fraction of the value that you're going to give them. Why is that an issue? And when you can communicate that to them in such a way that they get it, like a no brainer to them, then the price isn't an issue. You're the one focused on the price. So therefore they're focused on the price. And I talk about this with my clients often in, in my um, advanced programs. It's the concept called perception is projection, right? And so what we're perceiving is what we're projecting, what projecting is what we're perceiving. It's like, of course, it's an issue for them because it's an issue for me if I'm selling it. It's not an issue for me to sell something high ticket. Why? Because I believe so much in the value that I'm providing. I believe so much in that, that the outcome that they're going to get. I'm like, it's costing you, buddy, way more to stick with what you got right now. It's you want you think my program's expensive? Try holding on to your problem for the next five, 10 years. What's that going to cost you? Try holding on to that. What is that costing you internally? What kind of, what are you going to bed feeling and fearing at night? What are you going to bed with anxiety, thinking about the future, not achieving? What are you going to bed, you know, thinking like, oh my God, this problem, ruminating on that problem over and over again and thinking about it all day, every day. That cost is much greater than the cost of this solution. And until you get that, buddy, your life is going to stay the same. You're going to continue waking up every single day with that same issue, that same problem. And then... When you can really present, and maybe not call him buddy, okay? <laughs> I'm being a little animated, right? I'm being a little animated for the purposes of, you know, I don't know, making it fun. Call them their name, please, no buddies. <laughs> but when you, when you can pitch with that level of conviction, with that level of passion, because you believe so much in the outcome that your product provides, and you're so congruent with that, that you're like, price, that means nothing. It's costing you more to hold on to that problem. When you can deliver your product or your service with that level of conviction, guess what? Number one, the deals are going to be going down. They're going to be flopping around like crazy, right? When you can connect them so much to the pain and the cost of holding on to that problem versus the solution of solving the problem today with the solution that you're providing them, then that's not an issue. What do you want to do? You want to pay, spend, you want to save money? Oh, well, then buy into my, my program, right? Buy into this product, invest. If that's what you want to do, or do you want to really solve the problem? If you want to solve the problem, invest. If you want to save money, invest. If you want to pay less, pay more, then hold on to your problem longer. Hold on to the thing that you're holding on to longer because that's costing you. And this is such an important, it's mindset first, right? And when I help clients double and triple their prices, what the, the thing about that is if they can double their price, right? I have a client right now who's going from a couple hundred dollars. She's going to be up to thousands of dollars very soon. Why? Because she is a brand new client of mine. She is going to believe, she doesn't quite yet believe, but she's going to believe in the power of her, the transformation that she provides and the and value of her and the services that she provides. So this is the work that I do, right? Get them to believe that. Because um, if you don't believe it, your client's certainly not going to believe it. Your prospective buyer is not going to believe it. And they aren't going to invest that, that rate, right? So a couple of things that happen. There's so much that happens when we actually start releasing these, this fear of selling a, a, a higher ticket investment or a, a, um, a product that's, um, you know, of a greater investment, a greater price, because the, the transformation occurs at those levels. Clients who pay, right? People, when people pay, guess what they do? They pay attention. When people pay, they pay attention. When people don't pay, they don't pay attention. See, we run challenges and sometimes we actually have people bring in accountability partners. Those partners don't often have to pay very much money to get in. Those people do not get transformation more times than not unless they're a very unique individual and they see the value immediately. Because why? Because they either were gifted it or they didn't pay, right? Enough to where it's like, oh, I'm going to pay attention. When people pay, they pay attention. So if you really want to increase the quality of your clients, number one, you want to start working with, for those of you who are coaches out there or trainers or people who have products and services that you market online, whether it's online or in person, or if you're even selling, well, I guess we're not doing live events in person. Actually, I take that back. I'm going to co-facilitate an event with my partner out in Montana in just a couple of days where we have clients flying in or he has clients. They're actually partly my clients too, flying in from all across the world to participate in this incredible 10, 12 day experience in person, but most people are working their, their programs online right now. Right. And I get that. And so when you're doing that, like if you want to 
um, have better quality clients who actually show up and do the work and they're not pain in the asses. They do what you tell them to do and they're not harassing you on the phone all the time. We'll sell them something that actually works and stop thinking that by you presenting an option for them to, to invest at a higher price point that you're hurting them. And who cares if they cancel or kick, right? That's also in your mind, you're creating that. So change what you're thinking about, change the story that you have, they're gonna con cancel and they'll stop canceling. I can't, like there were so many Many managers in my past career years ago when I used to sell timeshare that were like don't sell them I take it don't sell them they kick they kick meaning they cancel I was like you're absolutely ridiculous like do you want to make money learn from me right like you're ridiculous and I remember even having a manager who would say Joni you're greedy I'm like I'm greedy by selling them something they want by upgrading them into a, an option like you this is why you're not making the money that you want to make and this is why your client you're not serving our clients and that's why you don't get on my tables and close for me because you don't know what these clients really need you don't know what's going to serve them and what's going to serve them is them actually getting freaking uncomfortable you guys like this if i can't stress this look it's almost 10 o'clock at night i came down from my rv that's like an hour away from here to just pick up a couple things that i forgot i'm heading back up to the rv another hour drive haven't eaten practically all day my passion is exuding we're heading off to montana in a little over a day my passion's exuding because i'm so passionate about you understanding the value of a client investing in themselves at a high level and when you get it trust me they get it this is so powerful and when you get it guess who makes more money you do and in the end they're happier because clients who pay more not only do they pay attention but they're happier clients they're much happier clients. So ignore the coworkers, ignore your team members, ignore people in your life who are saying, don't increase your prices or don't sell higher ticket, you know, programs or products or services. Sell it because they cancel. That's why they're broke. That's why they'll continue to be broke. And you're going to start thinking like a successful person and a person who's wealthy and is out there tr creating transformation and change in the world. You want your clients to really love their life and, and live it fully and actually pay attention to what they bought and not sh put it on a shelf and never look at it again, right? The proverbial shelf, maybe it's not actually a box, something in a box or a thing, but like never look at it because they barely invested into it. Well, sell them something that gets them so freaking uncomfortable. You want rapid transformation, sell them something that within 30 days they're going to change their freaking life because they spent that much money and ask them to pay in full. Why? Because when people pay in full, man, they, they're, they get value. They're seeking the value out of it when they, instead of being on a payment plan, it's so important when you get that. I always tell my customers, guys, we don't really do payment plans because number one, I want you to get so uncomfortable that you lean in fully. You lean so in fully because number one, you're going to get the outcome that you came here for. And isn't that why you're, you're coming to me in the first place? And they say, yeah, and we do payment plans. Sometimes I'll help people out, but it's like, you really want to get uncomfortable. I, encourage you to find the money, pull it out of wherever it's not working for you, stop doing the thing that you're wasting money on and invest it into you because you are your greatest asset. You are your greatest asset. And if you aren't going to invest into you, then nobody else should invest into you because you don't believe in you. So hopefully you're getting value from this. By the way, for those of you listening live, I'm going to go in right after this and check your comments, but let me know that you're getting value out of this. Drop a, a yes in the comments below. Um, so not only do you get better quality clients, right? I, I, you know, we, we do have lower ticket programs. We have entry level programs where people come into our challenge for like, you know, heck, sometimes less than 50 bucks, like $37 or whatever, sometimes 97. If we're running a promotion, it's less. And are they the best clients? Hey, some of them are, and some of them are ready. They're ready for the, up, the higher level programs, right? And I deliver, I deliver everything that I can. I don't discriminate whether they're, you know, higher ticket or low. And of course, when people, you know, obviously like you give your clients who pay a lot more, a lot more, okay? You gotta understand, you give them a lot more because they're paying a lot more. And it's a greater level of intimacy and connection to you than in your lower ticket programs. So, um, so stop wasting time focusing on how to sell a lower ticket, like, you know, just selling these things that aren't creating transformation in your clients that aren't giving them real results and really start focusing on, okay, so who do I need to be to sell something that actually gets them results? Who do I need to be? Meaning, do I actually have to believe in this product? Do I have to be a believer in my product or service that I sell? Do I have to be more confident? Do I have to be more convicted? Do I have to more conviction? What is it that I have to be? Do I have to, you know, be more bold in my process? If I'm pitching something that's four times or five times more than I have 
happen, or if I'm now selling or offering a product or program that's, you know, much more of an investment than it was before, probably, right? Probably getting really clear on that and then working on your delivery on how specifically to deliver that to your client. So important. Um, so, so, so important. And the other thing is, you know, so I have a client, you know, who's selling a couple hundred dollars for time with her and, and, um, and another, and like one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm like, well, how do you think if you were the person buying that, you would receive that in terms of the value. Like, yes, people want deals. And, and I think that the people who want deal, like everybody wants a deal, right? But when you're, I, I think people want deals, but there's also an understanding that if I'm paying, you know, hundred dollars or $200 for coaching services in a month, that I'm really not that vested. And I really don't believe in you as a coach, because if you were really that great of a coach, you'd be charging me 10 times that or 20 times that, or even more. And when you, people will take you seriously, when you charge those rates, when you charge somebody 10,000, 25,000, $50,000, they're going to take you much more seriously than when you say, Oh, I'm $50 an hour or, Oh, I'm a, you know, a hundred dollars a month. You get about four sessions with me personally. You can call me whenever you want on the phone. No, 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 no. <laughs> You've just devalued yourself and your services. So if you want to sell more, increase triple for some people need to like 20 X their prices, 30 X their prices, right? Because think about how much when you're selling something that's uh, when you're selling something that's a thousand, or let's just start with a hundred dollars. You're selling that something that's a hundred dollars. You have to sell a hundred of those things to make $10,000, hundred dollar thing. You need to sell 100 of them to sell to make $10,000. Now, if you're selling something that's $1,000, you only need to sell 10 of those to make $10,000, right? So you actually have to sell way less when you, you know, increase your prices that substantially. And then if you take your prices to $10,000, you only have to sell one of those to make $10,000. So this is one of the things that I love by increasing my average transaction price and really focusing on selling value first, right? Not discounts, screw the discounts, man. If you want a discount, go down the street. I'm not your discount provider. I want to be the most costly person in my market because I get results for my clients, right? I get results for them. So you can go down the street to the, you know, I don't know, the Kmart coach, <laughs> like, or came aren't even around anymore. I have no idea, but you know, I, I, I'm joking when I say that, but really like if you're a coach who just wants to give discounts or well, you're approaching this all wrong, be the person who charges the most in the industry because if instantly your perceived value goes out the roof and then know how to deliver results, deliver results, know how to get your clients results. That's super important. All right, rock stars. I have uh, maybe overstayed my visit <laughs> in my own home. I need to get up to the RV and uh, get on with, um, yeah, the rest of the evening. So rock stars, I hope you got value from today's episode. If you did, do me a favor, share this out with your team, share this out. I don't care what industry you're in, share this out with your team, share this out with your coworkers, leave us a five-star rating if you got value today and a review, please leave us a review. It helps us increase our rankings through the, the podcasting platform and reach more people out in the world. And more than ever, begin to believe in you and begin to believe that you are worth it and your clients are worth it and you're doing them a huge disservice when you sell them something that they have to figure out how to fit into and they have to call you back and say this doesn't work it's not the thing or they're just not that committed to getting the outcome that they truly desire and deserve so rock stars get out there create an absolutely incredible day tomorrow depending on what time you're listening to this or today and be truly unstoppable peace